So perhaps this will be like preaching to the choir, but what I want to talk about today is that diagrams aren't always evil. Design documents aren't always evil. They aren't always a waste of time. So if you are a person on the other end of the spectrum who thinks that design documents and diagrams essentially are always a good idea, perhaps you can use this video to give you some nuance. And if you're a person on the spectrum, on the end of the spectrum where I started, essentially thinking that diagrams are a waste of time, then I want to offer you some nuancing points. So let me tell you about my experience of diagrams. So I did five years of information systems, as in a bachelor's and then a master's. And it's my subjective experience that we didn't really talk about agile very early on. So my subjective experience is that we've dug into the details of agile methodologies later on in the studies. The reason I'm saying this is that I, I think that this has had a negative impact on my view on diagrams. Or more broadly, let's think of them as design documents. Essentially, I've developed a negative association. I've developed a, a strong feeling that diagrams are a waste of time. So I'm not saying that's what happens at every software engineering or programming related program. I'm not even saying that's what happened at my program. I'm just reporting my subjective experience. So even though we didn't talk about agile methodologies in depth, we were criticizing the problems of classical linear methodologies like waterfall. So to me, it seems like it became kind of one of these classic scape scapegoat scenarios. We're bashing on waterfall as a methodology and blaming it for all of the software failures that we see in the world. Kind of counterproductive way of learning methodologies. So this caused me to, as an individual, develop the idea that diagrams are a waste of time because if, if we're using linear methodologies, then we will draw the diagrams, build a system and then realize that the system is incorrect and thus that the di diagrams are incorrect and then we would have to redo the same thing over and over again until we get it right or run out of money. So you know, I mean, I was naive when I started learning programming. I was naive and young when I started university. So I don't find it fairly surprising that when I heard things such as agile or, or even better, such as extreme programming, right? <laughs> If you like programming and you learn about a methodology called extreme programming, I mean, of course that sounds like this is the Hail Mary, this is fantastic, right? This is the thing that will reduce the time we spent on producing diagrams and maximize the time we spent actually writing productive code. But of course it's not that easy. I mean, young people are fanatics, right? So I don't necessarily find it surprising that that's the view I, I took on, right? To really emphasize how detrimental this image is, initially I believe I had the views uh, of, of extreme programming and of agile methodologies uh, kind of in this way, that it was as if I held the view that management wanted to control the programmers, right? Wanted to impose restrictions, impose timesheets, control the outcome as management do in other industries, I assume. And I guess I found this oppressive, right? In a very juvenile sense. And this is probably what, what forced me to get the feeling of wanting to say, roughly, stick it to the man. So what I'm saying is that we have to be really careful in these discussions to make sure that youngsters like myself are not turning into fanatics, are not turning into people that are refusing to discuss with management, for example, or are refusing to be imposed restrictions or <clears throat> control or methodologies or structure from management. But I digress. <laughs> Let's get back to diagrams and design documents. So my understanding of Agile, correct me if I'm wrong, but is that there is a place for design documents. There is a place for diagrams. The argument is simply that diagrams should not be, we should not use diagrams to document every minuscule detail of the system and we should not use diagrams as a mean, means of specifying the system and then use that specification as a requirements document and then create contracts around that so that if software developers are delivering according to these design documents they have succeeded in the development but if they diverge they have not and they would be breaking the contract. My understanding is that that's the kind of thinking we should stay away from when using design documents in agile development. So it's not design documents per se, but rather the fallacy of thinking that design documents are the panacea. So how should we then use diagrams? What would be a good, what would be a healthy way of using diagrams? This is the way I understand agile development, but also my personal opinion of what I think a good way would look like. Feel free to make counter arguments in the comments. I think we should use it to reach consensus. 
or let's say rough consensus. Consensus is a dangerous word because we'll probably never ever reach consensus. So convergence or again moving closer to consensus. So we should use it as a means of creating a shared understanding of different parts of the system, of requirements, of what we are building. But again, not with the intent of turning that into a contract, not with the intent of turning that into the one and only true specification where if anybody breaks the specification, they're in the wrong, right? Not that. Because I mean, if you think about it, one of the pillars of, of agile software development is customer collaboration over contract negotiation. One of the few pillars is the idea that you should not put things that could be bad for the customer in contracts. You should instead collaborate with the customer and put other things in the contract. So what are some diagrams that I use? Well, super subjective, right? But I think ERDs, entity relationship diagrams, they are probably, to me, the single most valuable diagram that we have in software development. It's fairly, a, a relational database is fairly straightforward. Disregarding denormalization, assuming that we are, we are normalizing, then that I find is a very, very useful tool for pinpointing the domain language, what we want to call different things, but also the relationship between different things, right? And as we are figuring out these relationships, inevitably we will provoke a lot of interesting discussions that make it obvious that we don't know all of the requirements. It will provoke out the need to have discussions about what we're actually building. So that, hands down, the single most valuable diagram for me. Always, I always do entity relationship diagrams. <clears throat> but apart from that, uh, I sometimes draw flow charts. Uh, I sometimes draw something kind of like data flow diagrams, DFDs. But more importantly, I guess I use class diagrams, right? Class diagrams are actually a very useful way of talking about design patterns. UML class diagrams, right? So it, it took me a long time before I sort of got rid of this angry feeling or angry relationship or conflicted relationship with especially UML, right? But diagrams in general. So it took a very long time before I actually could cope with drawing uh, UML class diagrams. But when I started to do it, it's actually very, very useful. UML sequence diagrams, I have to say, I I've probably never used and uh, I'm not sure if that's because I haven't spent time to actually learn them properly, but I, I, it feels to me that that's where we sort of hit the point where I feel that we're spending too much time in the details, so diminishing returns, right? We're, we're spending too much time in relation to what we're gaining from actually drawing these diagrams. But I may be completely wrong and that may be because of my, uh, say, ignorance in relation to sequence diagrams. I'll be quiet, <laughs> just one final thing. What I want to say is that remember that to me, the syntax doesn't matter at all. It's silly. As soon as you, as long as you are using the same syntax as the people you are collaborating with, it doesn't matter. Consistency is everything. But if you use crow foot notation or like numbers in entity relationship diagrams, it matters zero, zero, as long as you can get along. So when I draw, when I say that I draw, for example, UML class diagrams, I usually use some sloppy notation that I just make up on the fly and not actually sort of the strict, rigid UML uh, class diagram notation. I think this is a key point. I think this is one of these scenarios where I think you should be pragmatic. Those details don't matter. And especially if you're creating the diagram in order to create consensus or in order to uh, lure out the requirements that are hiding, right? Especially in these cases, because then you're not actually creating the design document with the intent of keeping it alive for a long period of time. So then it's just a discussion tool. And if it's a discussion tool, feel free to use any notation that keeps you creative. Whatever floats your boat, right? So those are my five cents. Remember, diagrams are not evil. It's contextual. And there is a lot of value to diagrams. So don't close yourself in with your code. Talk to others. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.